Hey guys, it's Mr. Dragon Triple Zero here, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called Hey yo, what the fuck? This vehicle is obviously a poorly designed but high-powered square on wheels for the sake of internet memes. It's remote controlled as there isn't a driver's seat anywhere, and you can probably tell by the two antennas on the front of the car. Not only that, it's got a creepy face. Just try not to look at it for so long. The body that I've used to make this gigantic, weird-ass RC car is made by a modder named Gizmo Props in his trailer's mod file. The link is at the bottom of the description and in the Automation Steam Workshop if you want to download it. It has a lap time of 1 minute 10 seconds 8 milliseconds at the quote-unquote Top Gear test track and 1 minute 58 seconds 59 milliseconds at the Automation track. It has a top speed of 120 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 2.1 seconds flat. This vehicle is powered by a high revving 8.4 liter V8 engine that produces 1,307.8 horsepower and 855.1 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 4.7 miles per gallon and weighs 3,095.5 pounds or 1,404.1 kilograms. And for the market, since it's a remote-controlled vehicle that can either creep someone out or make someone laugh at its horrendous design, it doesn't compete with anyone in the market. In terms of how I made the AOWTF car, the panel material we made out of carbon fiber from monocoque chassis also made out of carbon fiber. With a front longitudinal engine placement and the front suspension uses a double wishbone and the rear suspension uses a push rod. With everything at plus 15, the quality spam the living crap out of this car. For the engine, it's a V90 degree V8 engine made out of magnesium with the bore set to 120 millimeters and the stroke at 92.5 millimeters with dual vert cam 5 valves made out of aluminum silicone. For the crankshaft, it's pretty uncommon for you to use this one. We're using a built steel flat plane crankshaft of lightweight titanium car rods and lightweight forged pistons. And also everything at plus 15 like I said before. For the compression, it is set at a pretty much an extreme 14.5 to 1 ratio with the cam profile set all the way up to 100 and we're using VVT at all cams. For the fuel system, we're using a direct ejection throttle per cylinder race to take running on ultimate fuel with the fuel mixer set to a 12.0, the dish typing set to a 95, and the RPM limit set all the way up to 12,000 RPM. For the exhaust, we're using race tubular headers with a dual exhaust setup with the exhaust diameter set to 95.2 millimeters, which is 3.75 inches, with no catalytic converters and no mufflers whatsoever. For the drive type, we're using an all-wheel drive configuration with a dual clutch 6-speed with the top speed set to 130.1 miles per hour, even though it says the estimated top speed around 120, but it don't matter. If this one had a whole lot of drag with this vehicle, it would probably go at least maybe like 220 or something, maybe a little bit more. And for the power distribution, it is set at 52% for the front wheels and 48% in the rear. For the tires, we're using radial semi-slicks with the front tire whip set at 375mm, the rear at 395mm running on some big ass 25 inch carbon fiber rims. For the brakes, we're using carbon ceramic 6 pistons with the size set at 420mm. There goes the weed stocks. And for the rear brakes, it's also carbon ceramic, but we're using a one piston brake with the size set at 300 millimeters with a pad type set at an 85, which is nearly a full blown racing setup. For the under tray of the vehicle, we're using a downforce under tray, the downforce setting set to a 50, brake airflow around 25, it don't matter that much. For the interior, we're using a handmade interior with a luxury HUD, and it's also a five seater, even though it's pretty interesting, it's got a third row seating, even though it's only got no seats whatsoever. Just add the seats to add more weight in this vehicle. <laughs> Try not to look too hard at this vehicle, even though I'm about to bring up the graphs so that it's not that distracting. So moving on to the power steering everything, it's got electric variable power steering with electronic stability control and launch control and no safety standards. And lastly for the suspension of the vehicle, we're using active sport springs with semi-active dampers and only options using passive sway bars with a race preset. Despite a good handful of problems in here, such as quality issues, power distribution, dampers, brake force, pistons, tires, all that good stuff, we're going to export this to BMG Drive and test this vehicle out. So here we are at the bottom map of the American Road, North Barstow State, and taking a look at this vehicle, well, first of all, this vehicle is hell loud right here, so I'm turning this down quite a bit. 
So take a look at the rear of the vehicle. I try to give it that Ford Mustang type of vibe where you got these sequential brake lights and turn signals here, even though they're not like, like a brake light here, here, and here, where you got three of them. You got four brake lights here and a turn signal, including these reverse lights. Same thing on the right side of the vehicle, including a Ford 2069 license plate, couple of exhaust pipes is shoved in there with a freaking fat rear end, as you see with the body molding right here. And also with the rear of the vehicle, especially the entirety of the vehicle, I just slapped in a bunch of lips on here. The lips in the rear of the vehicle, the side of the vehicle, and towards the front. <laughs> let me turn this off real quick and let me speak right here. This looks hella cancerous. <laughs> oh my god, please don't be in a freaking Twitter meme. You got these big ass headlights, eyebrows, smiley face, a nose. And even this vehicle, since it's supposed to be a trailer that would fix a bug issue at the wheels, hence the meaning right here, the words, wheel buggy fix and gizmo props trailer mod, where you got a actual trailer and this like filler here that fixes the bugs, that fixes the bug issues with the wheels of the vehicle, which I think what that is. And also to wrap this up, put the freaking tails on here or tail fins to give it that 1950s vibe, but it's the 2020s. So <laughs> trying to make it retro as I can. So I move myself a little bit over to the highway portion of the map here, and we're going to be doing some basic performance tests with this vehicle. For our tests with this vehicle, the first thing we're going to be doing is a 0 to 62 acceleration test, second a 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly a top speed run, which I think will might reach a top speed this vehicle, even though it's got a 1300 horsepower engine roughly. But the downside about this vehicle, it's got like a 1.0 drag coefficient, so it could be difficult reaching its top speed, but let's find out right here. So first of all, start with the 0 to 62 test now. And... We're already doing a frickin' wheelie. And again, I'm just gonna floor it. That didn't work out. Let's just launch it in first gear, to second gear, to third gear. That doesn't work out. What if I just floor it, but like, max out the gears, I go to sixth gear right away, like gear six. Um, I don't think this is possible. I mean, we're bouncing all over the place. It's so, like, rear heavy. I just want the damn top speed to be over with. All right, finally. 0 to 62 in 15.14 seconds of 890.72 feet. I was trying to achieve that for literally, like, I think a minute or so. So break now. It just flips right over on its roof. So brake test 62 to 0 at 5.95 seconds of 211.33 feet. So now let's just get ready for the top speed run, which is going to be very, very difficult. So first gear launch slowly. Second gear. Watch for that uh, wheelie. Third gear. Damn, even shifting the vehicle makes the... It does that. It's like so aggressive, these upshifts. It's to the point where I'm just doing straight wheelies. So here we go. 70. Back at its rear end. Back at its rear end. Bouncing. I'm literally going to give up on this. You know, let's cheat. Go to Jupiter. Keep this welded to the ground. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Already. Already. 120. So on Jupiter, we reach our top speed at Jupiter. I don't know about Earth. Let me go back to Earth real quick. No way, Jose. What is interesting is that the vehicle is, seems like it is capped out at around 120 miles an hour, even though I said to 130. I think my reason that's why it's doing it is because the vehicle's top speed shows 120, so it stays at 120 no matter what, which is the speed automation we got. And second of all, what's it like when we crash into this little guardrail right here? So stop here, go back to Earth gravity, and get a camera going. Am I going to clear this or not? Uh, it's gonna poke through the engine, so... Whoops. Hide the UI, and 100 times slow-mo, so... What's this break? Try to dip it down a little. So, 115 miles an hour, stabbing the engine. There goes the engine. Wheel buggy fix. 216 times, do a little bit quicker, and... Stop Deadwood's tracks. Recoils back. Do 8 times, and... Recoiling way back. Is the engine dead? Yes, it is because we struck it edge at first, going 41 miles an hour, going backwards, go to regular cam, and full time. And in terms of, like, the damage of the vehicle, let's take a brief look at it, and then we'll do a time trial run. So, left side's okay, or right side's okay. Front, 
Uh, it seems like it's a little bit upset. Lights still work? Yes, they do. Left side of the vehicle, all still okay. And for the rear, I see some parts flying, especially with the, um... Where, where are they at? The little taillights. So, I think they're gone. So, we got the hazards going off, because impact detected stopping car for some odd reason. It should be blinking to begin with, even though it is gone, but we still have our license plate and our exhaust pipe. So, that seems great. Alright, time trial run. Are there any time trial, like, layouts here? Or time trial maps of this map? Uh, yes, I do. Let me see. So we're definitely not taking the tour. What's this do? The AR race track short by doing... Oh, let's do a couple laps of this thing with this vehicle in the new hour. So take you to the starting line right now. So here we are at the starting line of this here racetrack. We have no start and finish actual line right here, but we're right underneath this little gantry here, but that's good enough. So let's get ready to start this here time trial off the hellish way possible here. Three, two, one, slow launch, go. Let's just keep the ECS at comfort, so let's just... Oh no. Okay, this is starting to get bad already. We're upshifting, and it's already jolting me back pretty good. If I had like a two, three, four thousand horsepower vehicle, I would already be doing wheelies by now. It would have been bad already with this vehicle. Either with this type of vehicle, and bright turn. At least put some barriers in here, man. It sucks, and it's doing wheelies all the time. I can't even steer that much. Look, right steering hard to right. And I can't steer because it's doing these goddamn wheelies. I think I need more front weight or something. Put some more weight in the front, make it front wheel drive, something here. Okay, brake. Just pop on the brakes and just let the, um, the compression and air braking, or what is it, engine braking do its job. I said air braking, I'm dumb. Well, air braking, yes, that's part of it, but the drag of the vehicle and also the compression, the very high compression, start doing the engine braking to also slow down the vehicle without touching the brakes. And steer a little to the right, I can't steer with around 20% right steering input, left, look, hard left. Almost missed my checkpoint, and I'm already off the grass, into the grass, and back on. And now that ECS is trying to do its job here, keeping the vehicle as stable as possible. We're flooring it. Tap the back end again. I need some wheelie bars up in here, and what is this, a slalom test? Bro, we already got a slalom test already. 60, look at this. Boom. 60-ish again. Boom. Perfect. I should probably do this. Mm, my god. I'm okay. I say that vehicle would have faceplanted even more, rolled onto its uh, roof, then it would have been game over for me, unfortunately. I think the strategy to driving this vehicle is when you upshift, just let off on the gas, just let it upshift and let the vehicle come to itself. So you're not getting a whole lot of wheelies, of bounciness, all that stuff. So cut up to the start and finish line, it looks like. Let's go in a little bit, so our first lap time would be around a 250-ish, right? So it's all green, it's not blue like it's the end of the course here. Lap time, 2 minutes, 50 seconds, 19 milliseconds. Eh, how about this lap here, this second lap? What sucks, I'm also on max gears. Whew, I was close to on max gears here that I can't even go faster or want to go faster. It's like if you go up to like 70 miles an hour, that's where you start seeing the vehicle do freaking wheelies and crap that it's just almost impossible to control whatsoever. And we got a better split time of four and a half seconds, almost 4.6 seconds, so that's pretty great. So look, it's 80, 81, wheelie, wheelie, 82. I think it's my personal best with this vehicle on Earth gravity, 82 miles an hour. I don't think I could control this in, no I can't, in a time trial setting, so that's unfortunate. It'd be nice if I could control the gravity settings in a time trial, rather like said, to Jupiter gravity and show its true potential in this vehicle. It's probably better off also just to keep it at 6th gear, not just go 1st gear, 2nd gear, 3rd, 4th, 5th, because, like you've seen, if it upshifts like crazy, it also does wheelies like crazy because of the aggressive upshifting with this vehicle. So it appears we're doing a much, much better run, like 5.8 second split time with the 1st and 2nd lap here, so be careful with this right turn. And good, so forward a little. Keep it around 70-ish, which is probably the most we could do without doing a wheelie and making ourselves go out of control here. So we're cruising at around 80 miles an hour. And finish time, 2 minutes 31 seconds, 186 milliseconds. That is a big time record breaker between the first and second lap here. An 18.834 second difference between the two laps. That, that That's a great improvement, to be honest with you. So go to free roam. If I buy cells to crash, somewheres like head out at you, like the stands, a wall, tree, somewheres. Uh, tire barrier. Okay, here, go, go, for for it. And what's a crash gonna be like when I'm doing a wheelie up in here? So 60 times slow ball, resume physics, and here we go. 68 centimeter collision, wheelie, 
boom, here it goes, there goes the lag, there goes all the parts, the antenna, the antennas, put it that way. And parts of the rear of the vehicle with the taillights is doing a freaking front flip. Speed is up to around four times, and bang, here it goes, full time. And the engine somehow still runs for some odd reason. I don't know why, but it just simply runs and sucks. I can't grab the top here where it's this wheel bug fixed. It'll be kind of interesting if there was a J-beam structure and beams whoa, on the top of the vehicle with the wheel bug fix here. So our front tires are gone. Screw up the left side. Rear end, rear uh, hazard going off because impact detected stopping car. Right side's messed up. Front, not that much. Kind of interesting. And lastly, can the vehicle still drive? Sort of, but we're doing we're doing donuts. So it's a donut vehicle. We'll have six gear, brake damaged, tire broken, and rear tires are trying to take off. All right, let's get ready to switch up maps here. Let's go to Car Jump Arena and see if this crazy ass weird car will hit its all time low of my worst vehicles ever made in this game in my channel's history. So here we are at the top of Car Jump Arena, at the top of the ramp here, and we got uh, one light here, two light, three light, four light, five light, get ready for green so we can go and go. Go right now. And this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Let's probably take this even slower. Let's go. Max gears, let the car just go down and go. Increase speed. Increase speed. Here we go. Here we go. And we're doing okay. Around 90 miles an hour. 95. And get ready to for it. For it more. Add for it. For it. 103. 92 upon exit. And this is going to be a hard one. So zoom in a little. 60 times. 28. And that is a hard landing. So full time all the way. All the way down until something else happens. We're going to land on our roof. Flip a little. And do some more flips and landing on our three wheels. So let's keep on going and just keep on going. Um, really? I can't even accelerate whatsoever because none of my wheels are on the ground. Look. And that hurt. I'd say I couldn't even accelerate whatsoever because the tires here, they're not even touching the ground or whatever. Even though it's got all wheel drive, but it failed me, unfortunately. So that is the looks of this vehicle from that collision. Let me try this again, but do this in Jupiter gravity and then for it. And once I get down to the end of the ramp, just go back to Earth gravity. And wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Did the sparks just change? Moon grab. Oh, look at that. Look. Zero gravity. Oh, that's kind of neat. Let me go to sun gravity. Wow. Oh, that is... <laughs> that is neat. I never knew that these could do that in the game. We go back to sun. Add. prepare yourself. Oh god. And there it is. <laughs> okay. Go back to Jupiter Gravity, respawn it, and take it down on the end of the ramp. I never knew you could do that with those sparks in this map here. I thought there was just like a simple decorative asset that just did absolutely nothing. And look at that. Already topped out at 120 miles an hour. 120 exact. So get ready to hit the pause button now and get ready to swap this into Earth Gravity. There we go. 9.1 meters per second squared. Go. Hunter and okay, it's it's 117 or something. So four times slow mo, back end. Uh, sucks we couldn't even clear it to get to the bottom of the ramp, the downward slope of the ramp. So let's just two time it right here for this hit. Just full time it all the way, and we're rolling. Impact detected stopping car. Still rolling. Lag. Thanks lag. Still rolling. Compactness down even more. Hit the roof there. Another tire's gone. Radiator's messed up, and still rolling. Still rolling and still compacting. Impact detected stopping car again, and we're rolling like end over end, spinning around, and landed on our roof. God damn it, almost landed on two of our wheels, two of our four wheels, so get this upright, and engine start of oil, who even cares about that, and come on. Alright, good. Now, show you the aftermath of the structure, but shut the engine up because it's so loud up in here. Front end, worse than last time. Right end, also worse than last time. The rear end, even worse. Left side, just about as bad as the first one, and that is it with the vehicle. And before I show you the last part of this video, I just noticed about this vehicle. You can do freaking reverse wheelies all day with this vehicle. Look at this. Reverse wheelie right now. Give myself a line, and we'll get us hard on the accelerator, and boom. <laughs> Was that like 100 feet or something doing that reverse wheelie? 
Something like that. Alright, so recover and drive down in Jupiter gravity. And this will be the last part of the video where I drive at high speed and crash at the last bridge pillar at a high speed to get a high speed crash test going. So drive right now. For it all the way. For it, for it, for it. 0 to 63 at 2.82 seconds, 200, uh, 125.11 feet. Not that bad. Alright, align myself a little and get ready to go back to Earth gravity now. Okay, pause. Earth time now and then slow it down to 16 get a camera going right here and this is pretty creepy you got this coming at you at a very high speed so get ready to 100 time a little too early but it's better off just to adjust the camera a little bit so we'll do that adjust the fov and here we go 1600 and here comes the collision now there goes the front there goes the words glitching out already. Hazard's going off right now because it back to the car the back end of the vehicle we get the uh, tail lights and what is that those are the tail fins, so A type slow mo to four, two, and full time. And engine still runs. Uh, uh, that's weird. 120 mile an hour crash, and it just doesn't want to let up. So reverse a little, and good. Park it here, and double park. Let's just hold on to the brakes here. So taking a look at the aftermath destruction of the vehicle, we got the left side hella damaged with the two wheels merged into one. The rear end, we got the exhaust poking out even further than before. That's interesting. Right side, also got some merginess with the wheels. Front end is just completely gone. And the words here says, Whoopig Figs. Yeah, Whoopig Figs. That's a nice vehicle name. You agree with that? So that'll do it with automation and Bateman G drive with the AO WTF car. This may be the worst vehicles I've ever made and ever designed in automation history. If you put all my previous designs to the side, <laughs> this might be the worst of them. This creepy ass front face that does wheelies all day with a 1300 horsepower engine. Yeah, like I just said, does wheelies all day. Forward wheelies, reverse wheelies, and it's pretty much undrivable on Earth gravity. Much be better off driving in Jupiter gravity from now on while driving this vehicle. So yeah, <laughs> no other words to this vehicle. Creepy and undrivable. That's all I got to say with this car. So this has been Mr. Jack Triple Zero. I'll see you in the next video.